Sure. So uh, today we're talking about transfer learning and the need for transfer learning is we want to use the pre-trained models as it is and doing a little changes for our purpose so that we can customize them according to our project. So what transfer learning does is we use a pre-trained model in our ne network and we change the last layer or the last few layers according to our wish, according to our need. So what is a pre-trained model then? A pre-trained model is nothing but a saved network that was previously trained on a large and standard data set typically maybe a image classification task but not necessarily so what happens is the data the model has been trained properly and it has been optimized uh, to the best of possibilities with the maximum number of epochs possible and the exciting thing about pre-trained models is that we can transfer learn from one pre-trained model to another task so it has already been trained we don't need to put all that time and effort in training the basic model and you can simply start testing with it by changing the last few layers. It's you can think of it analogous to a human who has learned to play piano or who has learned to play guitar and he's playing a new instrument now. Maybe he's learned to play guitar and he now goes on to play ukulele. Now, next up below, uh, how do we use the pre trained model now? So the concept was that we need, need not build every model from scratch because it takes a lot of time and effort to train the models. So the idea of transfer learning was this. And what we do is we have a source model. We have the source data on which the model was trained and the source labels. And then we have the target model, which is the model we need right now for our project, for our purpose. We have the target data and the target labels. Now there's a difference between the source data and target data as well as the source labels and target labels. And the difference will be mostly says that the target, sorry, the source data and the source labels will be a very vast uh, category. Like it will, con for example, if we have to make a cat versus dog classifier or a simple uh, object, de uh, object detection uh, software with like five or 10 different objects. And the source model will take is a, a larger data set is from a larger data set which has learned to recognize a lot of things and we need a part of it or maybe if it has learned to recognize something and we need an extension of it so that's the idea we uh, simply change the target labels and we send our data to it so it has learned to map the data from the data to the labels that mapping is what the neural network does so we'll simply change the labels and we'll send in the new data and it will learn to, it is already learned in a way to do that classification. It simply needs to do it on a different data with a different or lesser labels. So I think that explains the intuition. Next, uh, let us look into the architecture, how it works. So this was our older model, the model between the left hand side like before the left hand side of the dotted line, that's the pre-trained model. So it has the images, it has the data, it has a CNN model. So convolution layers, pooling layers, convolution layers, pooling layers, and then the neural network. So what we do somewhere in between the layers of the neural network, we cut it up and we don't disturb the part which is on the left, like the all the convolution network, convolution layers, pooling layers, and some of the neural network layers. We don't disturb them. But on the other hand, uh, the right hand side, we customize it according to our need. For example, our model needs a classifier for a cat, dog, boat, and bird. We just need, we just assume that we have these four items and we need to recognize and classify these four items, which are dog, cat, boat, and bird. So we'll use the pre-trained model and we'll just put these four labels at the end. So in the end, every image will classify as one of these four. And the one which has the maximum uh, value will set it as that. We'll say that this is what our prediction is. So we take the machine learning algorithm. We take a part of it, the model, and we change the last part. This meme exactly tells uh, how we are doing that. We have pre-trained layers. We have very proper, we have very properly trained model 
and we just add a few random custom layers according to our need and it and in the end it all works out so that was transfer learning and transfer learning can be divided into two basic types which are the feature feature extraction and fine tuning so the basic difference in feature extraction and fine tuning is that in fine tuning we'll have to run the entire model again we'll have to train it all again and in feature extraction we can simply use the meaningful features we have extracted from the previous model so you simply add a new classifier uh, on the top of the pretrained model so that you can repurpose the feature maps learned previously for our data set you do not need to retrain the entire model the basic model will be the same you don't need to retrain that this was feature extraction where we use the features as it is so we have the meaningful features already and the next one is fine tuning now as the name suggests fine tuning goes deeper into the and fine tunes the model or it it just it just uh, becomes more close to perfection it unfreezes a few of the top layers and then trains the entire thing so we have from the initial data to the labels we have a new correspondence it had learned something already we are telling it to learn according to our data again so the entire model has to be trained again but it has already learned some features all all right so do we have any questions okay so i don't see any questions vedant uh, yeah yeah i'll i'll show you one snippet code of this particular thing where we can use transfer learning so i can i'll give you a small demonstration i won't be running that because it will take a lot of time and we have a lot of things to cover i'll link up the link like give you the link and you can run it by yourself but i will show you how it works and you'll get a you will get you'll get some idea about it how transfer learning work um so let me share the screen let me know once the screen is visible uh is the screen visible harsh yeah cool so as you see uh, the first thing is always common like importing the libraries and then if you see over here we have given one link the place where our already pre-trained model is stored so the pre-trained model which i'm using here is inception so i've stored that there or the other way is import you can import the pre-trained model from the library like tensorflow has the pre-trained model stored in it so as you can see from tensorflow.keras.application.inception.v3 import in inception v3 and then i'm also i also have local weight file which i'm importing over here and then this is my pre trained model which is pre trained model equals to inception v3 and we can define the input shape and that's how it works and now if and if you see the pre trained model summary so you can see how many it has so many layers it has so many layers activation layers convolution layer normalization layers and it 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 it's so big the model is so big that's why and it has been trained on lots of thing and you can find different type of such models like such pre trained models like inception v3 v4 and resnet densenet i link up a, a blog about it these are the models created by some scientist at google and something and now you can just call up this link for your data set like once you have trained this model if you you have called this model you can just do pre trained model dot fit on your data set which is x train and x y y train and it will run for you on your data set so that's how something like this which is uh, tra transfer learning works um thanks for that demo vidant we'll be sharing the code with you as well as the slides 
Right. So, and you can run it. And if you have question, like we'll be having this Teams group active for one more week. As you know, this is the last class, and we'll be having a concluding session on probably on Sunday. So, uh, and after even after Sunday, we'll be keeping this group active for one week, so that even if you have any questions about the concept which have been taught today, you can uh, practice them and let us know so in the discussion section. And if required, we can also take a small uh, doubt and discussion session in next week. So uh, do try that code using that GitHub link and uh, let us know whatever your doubt is. This is a recurrent network, neural network, which will start next. So as you know, there are different type of neural network. We studied the feed forward neural network, the basics of it in the starting. Then we studied about CNN, which is good for image or computer vision problem. And next is recurrent neural network. So it's so hot right now because it's like in demand and um, lots of researchers are working on it. Lots of developers are working on this concept because it has uh, given solution to lots of problem. So what exactly is recurrent neural network? So RNN is a class of artificial neural networks where connection between nodes from a directed graph along a temporal sequence. So what does that mean? So in RNN, it creates a temporal sequence. So it's something like, um, so LSTM is one of the uh, RNN architecture, which is very, which is used generally. It's uh, very popular. And uh, basically the full form of LSTM is long short term memory. So the concept of RNN, it is generally used for something where we have a time series data, where our data is depending upon time. And the next data point, depends upon what we have already like what what's the probability of uh, stock market prices going up tomorrow so that depends upon what was it earlier what was it uh, back then what is the probability that after the it... so basically you can understand think what is the probability sorry i was telling basically you can understand the time series data such that the sequence of the data matters and the like the current data depends on the previous data. Like, exactly. If you're doing a regression. For example, problem, yeah, go on, go on. For example, if you're doing a regression problem on housing prices, the order of the housing prices data does not matter. It does not matter if you put a twenty thousand square feet house first or a ten thousand square feet house. But if you're doing the same problem of stock market prediction, then this matter is like then this order is what matters. That is what predicts the trend and predicts the future outcomes. So this is a time series data, and in time series data, we generally prefer to use RNNs and LSTMs. Uh, also, for example, when we type something on Google search, and when we type uh, start typing, it gives you suggestions. So how are those suggestions given? So how do how does if you type this allows? How does the Google knows that the next word is it too? So that's that's that is time series. So it so even that uh, is a place where RNN is, is used. So it kind of is something some architecture which remembers what is going on earlier and then links that to the next coming up point. And that's why it's called long and short term memory because it's work works like a feedback connection which has memory. You can uh, on a lighter note you can take uh, analogy of how those. Uh, if you have study about, study about those electronic gates where we have those memory gates. So it's something like that where it works. So RNN I remember because that it's, it's based on memory, short term memory. And the general application of RNN is stock market predictions, language translation, natural language processing, text summarization and speech recognition. So these all are somewhere which is based on time series or where uh, memory is required, where the next point is dependent upon what was earlier. So that was pretty much about RNN. And in this course, we uh, the coding of RNN is not covered. However, I will link some blogs about LSTM. And um, I hope you practice this and I hope you find this useful. The next is saving mo model and weights. So Suppose in first lecture, we created the linear regression model. Later on, we created the classification model. And how do we save those models? How do we extract the weights from the, those models? So we did it, but we forgot to save the weights. So let's know about it. 
for example, you have this classic linear regression model you, which you have created. So you have this regressor which you have created, like regressor.fit on X and Y. And uh, you can then predict regressor. We did till here, but how to extract the coefficients and the intercept of regression. So if you know the, uh, the equation of uh, linear regression is Y equals to MX plus C. So if you come to know about what is the value of M and C that the model has predicted, you can just define a function which will solve your problem. So you can uh, extract those by typing regressor.coefficient, which will give you all the coefficients which are possible. So if you have a multi-class class classification, which will have M1X plus M2X2 plus M3X3 and plus C. So it will give you all the values of M1, M2 and M3 in coefficients and you can also print regressor.intercept which will give you the value of c and later you can create such y uh, such a uh, function which is def model of where our input is x and y equals to regressor coefficient which is this value plus into x plus regressor intercept which is this value and we can re return y so this is how you can export your weight similarly it works with classification uh, uh, I always prefer whenever you are studying about it, like for SKLearn, this there will be different extraction po possibilities for Keras, it is different. So whenever you start up with one library, so if you're learning about SKLearn, make sure you go to the documentation and find how to extract those models. Or if you're dealing with decision trees, so go to the decision tree documentation of SKLearn and learn about how you can extract those models. So this was one example where we where I can extract the models for linear regression. And I can I'll link up this again in future slides because uh, we'll learn how we can deploy the uh, this model in mobile app or web web development app like web app using this. So I'll come back to this. I hope you got it till now and you can learn about how you can deploy other models through the documentations. Now uh, when you create a neural network, we can also take output of the model summary. Like mod we created this model, we can type model dot summary and run this, and you'll get a, a output of whole model where it will show which is the first layer, which is the second layer, which is the third layer. What was the shape of your uh, inputs while output shape while these this run this model was running, and how many parameters was there initial, then how many parameters next, and in which layer how many parameters were there, and it shows you basically the whole summary of your model, which will uh, make you easy to know what is happening exactly. So this was pretty much about saving model, knowing about the model summary, saving the weights. Uh, do we have any question in the chat box? No, no questions. Not so next is about SGR. So we'll start with Azure <laughs> Custom Vision, which is a cognitive services which is used for computer vision problem. So this is the link. Let me go to, go to that link and show you how it works. Till then, if you have any uh, doubts or if you want us to explain any topic better in depth, you can just uh, ask in the comment section or unmute yourself and ask. Vedan, the screen is visible. Is it visible now? Yes, it is. Okay. Oh, you need to do go to customvision.ai, which is the website for this. This is powered by Microsoft Microsoft Cognitive Services, which is an Azure um, service for machine learning and. Uh, this one, when you go to this web website, it will, it will ask you to sign in. So make sure you sign in using that account where you have Azure credentials or Azure subscription. So it won't work without Azure subscription. So you need to have Azure subscription for this. So this is my account uh, and let's click on create new project. And you need to give your name to your projects. So I can give any name like XYZ. I can give edges, uh, 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 I can give description if I want. The next thing is very important resource. So I've, as you see, I've already created a cognitive resource over here using my subscription that I have. 
you 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 currently have the student subscription so you can create resources if you are if you have logged in through the same id where your subscription is there so you can create resources from here so let's create a new resource so i'll type resource name as uh, demo and choose a subscription so i uh, currently i have visual studio enterprise subscription which i have got from uh, microsoft you have got the subscription from um, uh, us as a student subscription so you can select that and then you need to create a resource group inside those subscription so I, I have already a resource group which i have created called learn so i'll go for that one but you can create a new new one let's see how you can create a new one just you can you need to give a resource name and location to your resource where you want your data to be stored that's it and uh, then you can need to give resource use a use a your price entire and that's it so this is how you can create a resource i'm selecting my cognitive resource then i have uh, i need to select project type so in custom vision you can create two type of project basically classification and object detection so for now uh, let's go for classification and um, it will ask you for classification type so is it multi label classification or is it multi class classification so multi class classification is the one where you have just two classes or three classes like multi classes but you have just one tag for a class for example you have dog image and it is dog you have cat image which is cat but what is multi label classification multi label classification is the one where for a single image there can be two or three output for example uh, uh, if i have a car image if i car image there can be output uh, whether which demo of like which model of the car is it and what is the color of the car so i can give two labels to the same image that is color and model and i can have different model and color images train them and then my model will be like the the project will be able to detect uh, what model and color it is uh, hush you were saying something uh, i was just saying like uh, a simple example of a multi class images the one we did before cat and dog but with a new label at this time animal so a uh, cat will also be labeled as an animal as well as a cat right so this much this is pretty much about it then you have domain so why is it asking for you domain because basically custom vision is based on transfer learning so they have those models and they are running those model on your data set and that's your output so that's why it is asking for the domain so that it can link your project to a good um, a, a better pre trained model like if you have food uh, domain then if your if your data set is based on food then it will link up to something some model which was earlier trained on some similar data set so that will make your model easy but um, if you want to extract your weights like if you see here pick the domain closest to your scenario compact domains are lightweight model that can be exported to iOS and Android and other platforms so if you go for these compact domains like the last four you can easily use those models or output files to create mobile app and you can deploy a model in that app so let's go for general compact so that we can even see this and then it ask you for export capabilities like for comp compact it will give you Uh, option where do you want to export this so we, do you want to export this on basic platform like tensorflow core ml or onnx or do you want to go for vision ai development kit kit so vision ai development kit is another azure resource for iot application so for example if you want to create a, a ai based mobile app or custom custom vision based project and you want to deploy it in an iot based um, model like on uh, maybe on raspberry pi or on um, uh, and arduino then you can go for vision ai development kit but right now i'll go for basic platform and let's click on create project so the project is getting created the next thing is to uh, this how it the, this how the interface looks so now you need to add your images so it will it's something like click on add images and go to the place where your images are located so let me see my images are located on desktop um okay inside desktop it's in the classification 
if you see i have a train data i have two classes lotus and rows so i'll go for lotus i'll select all the images in the lotus folder and upload it here and then if you see it will pop up some a dialog box which will ask you to tag those images so in here in my tag i will say these are lotus these all images are lotus and upload nine images and it will upload those images similarly i'll go for um, rows i'll add image and um, i'll import all the rows images it will again give me a pop up of a dialog box where i'll just say that these are rows images and i'll upload the file upload those images once all the images are uploaded you need to click on this train button over here this green green train button on the top and um, it will ask you for training type so it has two option quick training and advanced training advanced training takes a lot of time Uh, and it's there for when you want to create a good model with high accuracy so it will take a lot of time and create a model on it but even go for quick training for now let's go for quick training because we want to it's just for demonstration purposes so now it's training and um, it will take a little time so far any questions a uh, pronunciation victoria even i am not sure about it <laughs> i call it azure but some people call it azure azure and uh, i don't know azure <laughs> these are very different pronunciation i call it azure okay so as you can see we have got output so it shows our accuracy precision recall as 100% and um, for both of it and we here you have probability threshold that how much uh, how much threshold do you want to keep that uh, if you say 50% then these model like it will label an image as lotus or rose even if it it is 50% sure about it so if you want to increase the surety that if you want that um, even i i am training an image a, a medical data set so i want to be 100% sure so you can increase the probability threshold as 100% and but for but particularly this data set uh, it the accuracy remains same for any probability threshold then you, once your model is trained you can go for quick test over here on the right hand side let's go for quick test it will open a dialog box which is not getting open right now yeah um then you can uh, let's go for image url so i'll search on my search engine about some bros images and um let's go for one of the image this isn't okay let's go for this image which is multiple rows this this let's go for this one which is single rows like this one is quite pretty close to our training data set so i'll uh, copy the image location or um, image url copy image address i'll type that over here in image url and um, okay it shows invalid Uh, uh this one let's go for this one uh let's try again okay the link is being shown invalid instead i'll go for let's browse some images from my local system so i have some images in my test folder which i didn't use while training so these are some test images let's go for this rows and as you can see over here on the right hand side uh, bottom there are a prediction which says that i can the it's rows with probability of 100% and it is lotus with probability of 0% let's change the image and go for a lotus image and run it quick it train it like test it again and it shows lotus as 100% now to trick the model i downloaded a tulip image so let's go for tulip image which somewhere looks which has a color of lotus and uh, but it's like rose so let's go for tulip and let's see what output do we get so it gives us lotus because the color was similar uh, last time when i did it it was like lotus with less accuracy because 
uh, it didn't look like lotus but color was lotus so it was like lotus with less accuracy less probability so that was like a tricking the model but this time it showed 100% lotus uh, so that's pretty much about custom vision then you can uh, click on publish over here on the left hand side top and when you publish it please choose the resource group i'll go for cognitive i'll click on publish and it will uh, give you a pre prediction url so you get this url basically these are like api keys which you can use so whenever you create a web app or a mobile app you can link up to this api and it will directly link your model and then when you upload an image from that web app or mobile app it will pass that image to this um, cloud based model this model is basically on azure cloud so this it will pass that image on this azure cloud and you will get output so this is how uh, this works i'll unpublish for it uh, for now because it will charge me money on my azure um the next thing we can you can do is you can export so when i click on export it gives me pretty much option like ios core ml tensorflow for android onx for window ml uh, if you want to extract it for azure ml or azure functions or azure iot gate you can go for docker file you can also azure as vision ai development kit so if you uh, see this it's for the um, model which are based on iot and embedded systems you can go for that so this is pretty much option you have when you click on tensorflow it will uh, let's let me go for tensorflow lite and i export it so it will download a zip file so it is getting ready and it will download a zip file for me which will have the uh, model uh, and also uh, which will be .tf light file and also it will download label file so i'll show you how it works in later like how can we deploy this in a mobile or web app uh, later so that was pretty much about custom vision let me go back and show you how object detection works like there were two type of problem classification and object detection let's again go for object detection so uh, i already have created a model over here where i uploaded images of hulk so these are some of the hulk images so these are pretty much hulk images and when you click on a single image you need to you know drag it this way and you can train it uh, tag it as hulk so this is done you need to do this for all the images for so that it knows what object do you want to detect and you can do it th do this for all the images once done you need to train it again and it will run and when you uh, test an image it will show a box on your object so it will uh, give a red box to your object with certain probability uh, let me see if i yeah this one not that one i opened a different model yeah so this is the spotting hero model where i i have already tagged 15 hulk images and i have already trained it so after training let me show how it works so let's go for quick test and now i'll upload a hulk mod a hulk image do i have a hulk image oh, i don't have it right now let me download an hulk image let's go for hulk uh, dr ban i want you let's go for oh, this one is video this one is also video let's go for this one so how many of you are marvel fan or avengers marvel yeah so i'll upload this hulk image which i just downloaded and let's wait so as you can see it tagged hulk in the whole image like the image had this background thing as well on the left and right side but it just tagged the hulk part with a probability of 70.1% so you can even do this with object detection and you can also export these type of models like you can go in performances and if you select if you click on this export you can export as you can see over here the recall is less the accuracy is less and um, you can improve it using uh, more images and that's how it works you can export it again and use it in your mobile or web app so that was pretty much about custom vision.ai and uh, do try it out you have cognitive you have azure subscription so you do try it out and let us know how is your experience with cognitive custom vision and cognitive services any questions 
Ankur was asking, can you please explain the probability threshold once more? Okay, so you we are telling the model that uh, if I pass an image, so if my probability threshold is 50%, so I'm telling the model that if I give you one image, so tell me the results, like tell me if it is rose and rose or lotus only when the probability of your if, if you're sure about it like if you're 50 percent sure about it if the probability of that thing is 50 percent don't tell me if it is less than that and if you for suppose it's a medical data set so at that time you want your probability to be high right you don't want that it should tell you that it is cancer only if probability is 10 percent you want the probability to be 90 percent that if you're 90 percent sure that it's cancer then tell me so at that time you can increase the probability th threshold to 90 percent and it will only tell you that it has cancer when it is when the it, it is the model is sure about it up till 19 percent so that's about probability threshold i hope you get it ankur any other questions shall we move ahead please reply yes or no so that was about azure custom vision the next thing which we have is azure face api so remember when we watched that video on the first day where we had that video of Microsoft where it, there was a guy uh, who could not see properly and that guy created a goggle which used to capture images and tell about the facial expression of the, some of the front one, like the people standing in front and who are they. So that was based on Azure Cognitive, uh, Azure Face Recognition API or Face API. So let's go and know more about it. So I'll open my browser again and uh, I'll give you a small demo. Uh, Harsh, please also tell me once the browser is visible again. All right. Yeah, yeah it's there. So when you search for Azure Face API, uh, yeah, this one. So again, it is cognitive services. So if you see azure.microsoft.com, services slash cognitive services. So cognitive services is a set of Azure services for uh, basically AI based. So these are the one you can go to this website and start free. But for now, let's go for demo. So it gives you three options, face detection, face verification and perceived emotion recognition. So let's go for face detection. So as you can see, here is one image. And on the right hand side, you have your output. So it has detected that um, it, it has detected the face was located on this uh, or for this values like it was on the top uh, left top uh, 76. Like these are the values where face is lo located in the whole image and it gives you face attributes which are null for now. But if you change the face, it will give you and this is de detection too. If I change the detection model to one over here, and now I'll run it again. So it's running again. So now, is, if you can see, it has give you more um, information about that face. If I hover on the face, it shows me gender is female, the age is 25, it has glasses, and the emotion is happiness. So remember, in the first video that we watched that day, it showed that uh, there is a person who seems to be happy and looking towards you. So that's pretty much about it. That that was answered through this face API. Uh, let's upload another image. So I will browse and let's go for some image that I have over here. Uh, okay. Uh, okay, this is my photo. And let's see if the model can detect my photo and tell some attributes about it. So I'm uploading the, that image. And as you can see, um, it tells me gender male age 21 well my age is not 21 oh god i'm screwing you <laughs> age 21 glasses no glasses and emotion happiness so it also shows that i am 0.06 percent bald uh, my hair color is black with a confidence of one um my skin color is brown so racist model with a confidence of 0.94 percent um it shows my color is gray. It is black. Come on. Uh, <laughs> uh, no, OK, that is that's not the color gray. It shows that the percentage of gray in this color is 0 0.29, like 29% image is gray. 
um, the percentage of red is very less, so the model cannot see anything red in this image, um, and that's how it is. It also shows me whether I'm smiling, so it's so it says it says smile is one, which is like confident about it. Um, it shows head pose with some attributes called pitch, roll, and yaw. I don't know much about it, but you can read about it. Uh, it shows that uh, I have a mustache, which is with a probability of 0 0.4, um, a beard of 0 0.4, and I don't have glasses. I have, I'm not wearing any eye makeup or lip, lip makeup. <laughs> uh, it shows happiness of 1%, as, uh, anger of 0 0.0, 0, uh, 0, 0 probability of anger. I am I'm no, no longer angry. I'm never angry. So that's why the model is pretty right about it. I'm not surprised. I'm not sad. I'm just happy with probability of 1%. So it gives you so much information about the face. And you can use this face API in your model. And you can know about... Um, you know, if you want to train some model which is on face detection, suppose for attendance, for example, one project can be in classroom. You want to detect whether the students over there in the classroom are happy or not. Um, you can use this face API or suppose you want to install uh, install a project or a model on your car dashboard to know that it's so, so that it raise alert when the person is if person feels sleepy. So the model will de detect whether the person is feeling sleepy or not. And if so, it will raise alert that it will raise some buzzer or something in the car that you are sleepy, come on, wake up, your life is in danger, something like that. So these are some cool projects which can be created using this face API services. How was it? Tell me, is, isn't it exciting? Yes. Tell me, what, what do you think can be created using this in your... Uh, in the chat box, let me know. Yeah, the, that APIs are needed by professor in the college. So, yeah, this is exciting. So let me know what different projects can be created using this face API services. Well, moving ahead, uh, we have. Uh, let me go back to my slide. So uh, anyways, I'll be sharing this PPT so you can get the link, but also I'll be share link, sharing the link for these all websites. So the next is Azure ML Studio. So what is Azure ML Studio? So let's know more about it. So let me go back to my browser again. So much of switching back. First, let by, me the once time, think, okay. by the time I think the uh, concept of confidence and the threshold is clear by now. Abhishek writes an application as an emotional timeline for a movie. Yeah, yeah, it can be. Right. Oh, I didn't show you the other features. <laughs> I forgot to show you the other face recognition features. So this was uh, the one module of face recognition API, which was uh, face detection. We can go for face verification. So when I click on face verification, it uh, tells, whether you tells you about verification, like whether that sorry continue continue yeah so it tells you that whether it's the same person for example uh, i want to know if for example if i have if i want to install um a security system on my home door or office door so that it only allows it only unlocks whether when i or my friends enter so i can create i can use this model this verification model and it shows that the two faces belong to same person with confidence of 0.93%. So that's about verification model. So let's try it out on her photo, her Sharian. Oh, I only get one. Im okay, I have two images of her. So let me save this image. So this is a difficult task for the model because the images are pretty noisy so let's try what happens i'll upload okay i'll upload an image and i i'll upload another image and now it will compare both the images like the faces in both the images
and okay it wasn't able the, the images were noisy so it wasn't able to detect faces in these images because this was like black and white edited and the other one was pretty blurred but you have some samples over here so if you can see in the samples uh, it showed the confidence of the um, uh, both the images like these images the, the, these two faces are saved with the confidence of 0.91 percent and the third option is perceived emotion recognition. So if you see an emotion recognition, we have the sample image which has four faces and it tells that there are four faces detected and it tells all about this emotion. Like in this one, if you see it shows happiness as one and other as zero in all those four, the happiness is one and other are zero. So you can do this with even this with emotion recognition. So as Abhishek, I guess, was telling about this, that emotion recognition stuff, so you can use this for that. Um, emotion recognition timeline. Priyanka says maybe you can use it to recognizing uh, criminals and keeping a check on them, right? You know, we can use it for people who are not staying in lockdown, who are asked to be in quarantine and moving out of town, so we can, you know, uh, deploy this model on the CCTV cameras of the government, like the public CCTV cameras in the uh, market. And uh, if that person who was asked to be quarantined is roaming around in the market, that can be detected and can be arrested, like the action can be taken. So something like that. So this is interesting, it has numerous applications. Uh, going back to Azure ML Studio. So Azure Machine Learning Studio is, uh, let's, let me sign in. So it's, a, it's totally free. You don't need Azure subscription. Don't, you don't need credit card for this. This is free for creation. For deployment, you may need uh, Azure subscription sometimes, but for creation, you don't need Azure subscription. So uh, let's see how it works. I hope. OK, we have ample of time. So basically, this is a drag and drop kind of thing where uh, you can upload your data, you can drag your data, and then uh, you can. So let's go for it. So uh, I've created this income prediction model. So let me show that to you. Uh, this is not yet training experiment. Uh, yeah, if you see here, um, this is my workspace where first I've added my data, which was adult census income of which is a binary data. And um, then I I've, uh, I've um, so if you search, if you search on the left hand side, you can get all the operation that you want. So I wanted to split that data into train and test, so I can uh, drag this split data box, and it is here where uh, I've split it. On the right hand side, it asks you for uh, how much should be the split ratio. So I told 0 0.7 should be the split ratios, and split the rows, not the column, and. Um, Later, I have used the training data, like the data is split. So as you can see, one and two. So I have used the training uh, data on on a train model, and I've used a boosted decision tree um, algorithm for this model. So I've inputted vote to this my train model, and then from train model, I have uh, taken the output on score model, which will score and tell how much is my accuracy of the model. And for that, I've also linked up my test images which I have split and over here and then I have this evaluate model. So this is pretty much about it. You can just create a model by dragging and dropping stuff. So uh, if I search for linear regression in the left hand side, it will give me linear regression which I can dra drag and use. Uh, I can uh, change this decision tree. For example, I don't want a decision tree model. I want a random forest model. So I will search for Random forest. It's okay, it random forest isn't available here. Uh, we can go for any other classification models. I'll just search for classification. Yeah, it shows me pretty much option. Uh, Bayesian classification, decision tree, logistic regression. So let's import logistic regression, and then I'll link this logistic regression to my train model. And now this model is based on logic, the logistic regression. Once the model is created, I can run it. So I can click on run. So it will run all the image, uh, this model on my training data set, on the data set that I have. Uh, I have. And um, as you can 
can see it's running it shows time first of all it runs this and as it runs it shows you a tick so these things have already run uh, so it's now training now it's evaluating so it's, as you can see it's running over here and um, let's wait for it it's, it is taking time on the test images any questions for now So it has scored the model, view output log, you can see the logs, you can set up, uh, you can create a web service based on this. So when you click on web service, update predictive experiment or publish to gallery. So you have pretty much options. So let me click on update predictive experiment. Uh, so I can set up a web service for this. And this is a log of what happened while the program was running pretty much about it. It will show you the duration, uh, the accuracy, everything you need to clearly see what is exactly happening. And um, uh, yeah, this is pretty much about it. So you have different data uh, available data set over here. You can uh, create your own data set as well. So this is these are some of the projects which you can be which can be created on uh, Azure ML Studio where you can just create by drag and drop. So I hope you find it exciting. You can create a new project, choose your data set. So it has multiple option of data set. And it also in here in data set, you can also upload your own data set. Like over here, it has a, somewhere it has option of uploading your own data set. And um, that's pretty much about Azure ML Studio. Do try it out. Do give it a shot. I hope you like it. And that's pretty much about Azure services. So Azure ML Studio, Azure is waiting for you. So do try it out. Do try custom vision. Do try uh, face recognition API. Do try this one. You have got the Azure subscription. Now I'll talk about deployment of the model. So remember I shared with you the link for my GPA prediction model last time where you need to input that GPA, which was a web app and it predicts the GPA for it for you. So the pretty much what I did was I first of all created a linear regression model. So I had a data set of GPAs uh, of different semesters. So I created a linear regression model and extracted the weights of the models, extracted the coefficient and I also, also extracted the intercept. Later I created a ASP.NET web app on Visual Studio Essentials. I'll show you this and then I created a form which predicts the um, which predicts the next GPA depending upon the input factors. So let me show you how this can be done. So you need to download Visual Studio 2019, which is the latest version of Visual Studios. And um, uh, you can download Visual Studios for free for, I guess it, it has the community version, which is free and it has a, develop, a developer budget version which is paid. So you can go for community version which is free and if you're MSP, uh, you can get, get uh, even developer version from the um, Visual Studio gift that we have got. What is it called, Harsh? Visual Studio uh, benefits. Benefits, yeah. From Visual Studio benefits. So you can get a key for developer edition as well. So my Visual Studio is taking little time. So let it open and I'll show you how I created that ASP.NET web app. Any questions for now? Also, you know, you, we downloaded that uh, TensorFlow file or we can ex uh, create a TensorFlow file. We can save a TensorFlow file uh, from our uh, Python file as well, which will be .tf flight file. You can use those files for creating a mobile app for image classification. So for mobile app, what I used back then for my project was Xamarin. So Xamarin is a platform um, uh, it's a SDK software development kit for mobile application development. Uh, Xamarin is again a Microsoft product, like a Microsoft service. So you can use Xamarin and Xamarin, is an, uh, Xamarin has option where you can import those TF file light and create a whole mobile application based on that. So let me share my screen and show you the Visual Studio thing. Uh, Hush, let me know once the screen is visible. It is, it is. Okay, so as you can see over here, 
um, I, have, I have created this educational data mine web app. So for creating a new web app, you, you need to go for, to go and create a new project. And you can click on this ASP.NET Core web application, which can deploy on C, which can be deployed using C Sharp. Uh, it can be used in Linux, Mac, Mac or Windows. It is a cloud based web service, so you can go for this ASP.NET. I've already created one, so I'll open that one. So let's go for this educational data mining, which I've created. It was a part of my research project, so it's loading. Uh, this particular thing uses C sharp, which is programming language and um, uh, and the front end can be created using HTML. So uh, you can learn HTML online and you can also learn C sharp. So if you wish to learn about C sharp, I also have created a C sharp series like basic series on my YouTube channel. So you can go and check it out coding in C sharp uh, and that will pretty much hel help you to know about how, how C sharp works. So till then. Uh, also, uh, guys, uh, there won't be any assignments for today's lecture. Um, we'll give you the uh, we have already told you about so many things. You can try them out and ask us and share your experience anytime in the teams. We uh, suggest you we um, recommend you to share your experience. It will be a great thing where people can know about what you created and how you did and what you experience while doing that. So uh, that you can do that and um, there won't be any assignment. Uh, your assignments are being evaluated like one to four and uh, the results will be out soon. So uh, before uh, putting the grade on the certificate, I wish to show you your grades, uh, your marks on the assi assignment, like your score. And if you have any problem with that score, like if you think the score is incorrect, you can reach out to us. So what do you think? Should, should I just... Um, send individual score to everyone or if uh, if possible can i just uh, give you the link uh, to a excel file which has everyone's score will that be fine for you because sending individual score will be very hefty sending uh, everyone's score to everyone like each of you so that will be very difficult instead please, uh, if can you allow me to share everyone's score on a single platform where you can see that i hope that's fine for you please respond in the chat thank you so the mobile uh, this web development app has already uh, has opened so let me show you how it works um, first of all let me show how many file it has so this is a whole project which is uh, which has multiple files solution explorer so as you can see on the right hand side this is my project which has different files over here it has app data uh, it has content. So these all things come predefined. You don't need to do anything. These are already there. But um, uh, the thing which you have over here is these different files. So the first one is the main.aspx. No, the first one is the site master. So if we go on site master, for this you'll have to learn web development. It's not easy. So I'm just telling what I did. The, the site master is the design for your front page. So that's the design for my front page. And uh, the main.aspx is designed for my page where I created a form. So as you can see, I created a form where I'm taking name, then I'm taking input of name like text box one, then I'm taking registration ID, then I'm taking input of text box two. I hope you tried that link which I shared with you, the GPA prediction. So it had name, it had uh, registration ID, it had current semester, so I had, I have this current semester thing, and then I give a drop down option like drop down list, where I have semester two, three, four, five, six, seven as options in the drop down list. Um, then I have I ask for tenth class board, tenth class marks, then twelfth class board, twelfth class marks. All these were text files, so I created these um, labels and uh, text boxes over here. And when I go on main.aspx.cs, so over here, as you can see, uh, I have I defined variable name, 
which I took from text box one. So as you can see, I converted it to a string and I took this from text box one. Then I have ID, which I took from text box two. Then I have semester, which I took from drop down, drop down list one. Then I have 10th board, which I took from drop down list two. And similarly, I have semester one grade, which I took from text box three, four, five, six, etc. And now I say, if the current semester is two, if the current semester is second, then the result will be 10th marks into the coefficient which I extracted from Python file plus 10 board into coefficient which I extracted from Python file. Then these are like input. These are my variables which I defined and these are my coefficient and the last one is my intercept. So as you can see, I created a Python file. I created by uh, I extracted the weights and I used those weights over here in my backend of ASP.NET web application. So what happens when someone uses it? The, uh, the person inputs that uh, data in that text box in the form. It comes over here uh, from uh, over here in the text box thing and later depending upon what semester you have. So if it has if and else if your semester is two, then it calculates the result depending upon your 10th board, 10th marks, 12th board, 12th marks and semester one result. If you have if your semester is three, then it calculates the result from 10th board, 10th mark, 10th, 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 10th and semester one and two result and um, uh, and it goes on. So it's and then I have this PDF writer which writes the PDF and as you can see it says uh, over here I have given output that your predicted GPA for semester which you have input is the result which I get. So these are the placeholders and um, and that's what happens over here and then later you can deploy it using Azure. So when you log in into Visual Studio with your uh, Azure subscription ID, you can uh, go on file in file and you can somewhere it has option to. So yeah, you can go in project over here on the top. And uh, yes, and you can you can connect it to services and OK, I don't remember properly what I did exactly, but you can deploy it on Azure web app. Yeah, yeah, you can publish over here. So if you click on publish education data mining, so it gives you option to publish it and it, it gives you option where you can choose your domain. So uh, it and you need to create a resource. So uh, from here you can create a new resource. And I have this Vedant Bahel web deploy model. So whenever I, when I deploy this, it, it gets deployed. So when I go to my browser again, so let me go to my browser. Okay, yeah, this one is the browser. And when I search for um, with dantbell.azurewebsites.net, it gives me this option where I have education data mining. And as you can see, it has name, registration ID, current semester, these drop down options, these text box. And when I click on download report, it downloads the report and tells me what is the CGPA. So this was the model which I created a linear, which I, how I deployed the linear regression model in our web app. And, and if you don't know much about it, Azure web app, if you use this, this uh, domain on Azure web websites, it is free. It doesn't charge you. You should have Azure subscription but it won't cut any amount from your 150 or 100 USD Azure subscription. It is for free. If you want to use your own domain, like something like withoutbehavior.com or something like that, then it will charge you because you'll have to upgrade your tire, but you can go for the free tire if you want to go for free. And that's pretty much about it. Uh, the next is how to create, uh, so I told you about Xamarin. So Xamarin is a mobile application development platform. So you can search for Xamarin and download and try it out. So I'll search for Xamarin TensorFlow Lite example. So here's the blog which I'll share with you. So I created a Xamarin form for pneumonia detection where I have to where if you pass chest x-rays, it will detect whether there is uh, pneumonia or not. So this is the mobile app which you can create using Xamarin. So as you can see, the step one is to create Azure custom visit services. So we know about how we can create uh, Azure custom vision model, how we can export the model by TensorFlow Lite. And then from exported model, we can create. Um, okay, this is pretty much about exporting. 
and then we, we can use this in the uh, uh, Xamarin where you can create a whole mobile app using this. So it has this code snippet. You need to change little thing and you can pretty much create that mobile app. So this is how you can deploy your models and um, OK. Uh, Shashwat says I have heard about Kubernetes and Docker used in ML and DL. Can you please tell me about that? Uh, so Docker basically what it does it what does is that uh, you know when we create a project in our local system, the project has many dependencies, right? For example, if I create this mobile application, so it has pretty much dependencies. I have some files which is stored at various places, and when I send, if I if suppose I want to collaborate with Harsh. And when I send that file to Harsh, uh, so that file won't run because Harsh won't have those dependent or source files. So I can put those all file in Docker or and I can send it to him. And that way it will have all the source file and dependent file will go to Harsh. Uh, Harsh, do you want to speak about it? Let's continue on. I think it's around. Uh, okay, so that much is pretty much about deployment and it was all about today's lecture. Please let me know how was it um, and uh, any questions. So we have ended it pretty early. Harsh, do you want to cover anything which you think it should have been covered throughout this workshop? Like we have now we are at the end of this two week workshop. All right. Uh, do we want to talk about anything in particular? Anything anyone in the meeting chat, you can just tell us about if you want to know any particular technology, if you want to know how to do this or how to do that. Any doubts or any question from uh, all of the uh, five lectures that we had till now? You can ask. So the next thing, OK, while you're asking, I'm just sharing this. So by tomorrow, I'll be sharing you the list of all of your performances of the assignment. And Vanshika, Yash Raj, um, uh, Yash Mishra, if you are there, please submit your assignments because uh, by tomorrow, I'll be finalizing the grade and uh, make sure you submit those assignments by by tomorrow, by today itself, if possible, like if tonight or by tomorrow morning, even if it is possible. Uh, please submit that your assignment, whatever possible, submit that so that I can grade you. And uh, the second thing is after uh, you will once I share you the Excel sheet by Saturday, no, by Friday, okay, by tomorrow night. Please tell me if you have any, if you think that you should have scored more and you scored less, then tell about that. So let me know about that. And uh, uh, the last thing will be so we'll try we'll be uh, sending you certificates but before that the certificates will be sent after the graduation ceremony which will be like the conclusion ceremony which will be on uh, Sunday uh, probably on Sunday so I'm just figuring it out if uh, if we can change it if possible so po possibly on Sunday and um, will there will be valedictorian speech so I will uh, when I share the grades tomorrow she will come to know who has who has performed the best in the class. So I want that person to uh, give a small speech about how was the experience and uh, of the whole workshop. And also uh, I'll share a feedback form. So I'll encourage if all of you can uh, submit that feedback form about the workshop and the assignments. And the last thing, uh, I also want to have one feedback sessions. Like I want to interview some of you so that I can create a one video on this whole thing. So please let me know if you are ready for interview. I will also be reaching out to you in personal chat. So that's pretty much about it. Harsh, I don't think any any doubts are there in the chat box. So is there a particular thing that you wish to share? If oh, OK, there's one. How should we proceed further for machine learning ML more deeply? So practice it more because this was a quick uh, workshop, right? So it wasn't like deep workshops. And we didn't cover a lot of things which we thought that uh, uh, once you, you know about what is covered, you can learn everything by your own. So learn about it, learn about different uh, models, learn about how those models work, like what is the uh, ma mathematics that goes behind. Uh, tr try learning about statistics, probability, um, 
uh, yeah uh, linear algebra calculus which is pretty much needed for this so make sure your mathematic basics are clear uh, learn about deep learning learn about rnn try creating an rnn based model try getting if you can get um, a real time project from some company where you just reach out to some of the companies uh, like some data science and machine learning based companies and tell them that uh, if you can send me some data i am ready to work for free uh, for now you can work for free and i can uh, try creating some projects out of it since you are not confident enough for now yeah do for go for some learning paths on ms learn um, ms microsoft has these uh, examinations which is like dp100 which is data scientist ai100 which is the ai certification for microsoft so uh, try doing that it asks you for machine learning services if you are pretty much good in that you can score good in that uh, those certification and you get those uh, certification which is signed by satya nadella so go for those um they try out yeah, harsh says try out some courses on coursera so these are there are many uh, deep learning courses by Andrew NG, which are pretty much uh, difficult, but I guess uh, till now you have read a lot about it, so uh, it, like it's learned a lot about it, so that you'll find it easy. There is one more course by Lawrence uh, Moroni on uh, TensorFlow, so there are there's three courses on TensorFlow, so go for that. Uh, know more about it. Any books? So I'm not sure about many books because machine learning is a new thing, so. Uh, the book it's already it's every time upgrading but um, in 2022 so I'm sharing this in 2022 my book is getting published on machine learning and deep learning uh, and it will be published by Oxford University Press so if you can wait till 2022 my book will be out <laughs> so I'm, well I don't know much about books which are currently there in market well uh, harsh I'll send the link to the books. Oh, cool. Uh, There's one by Ryan Godfell on Joshua Benjo. That's very nice. On deep learning. Yeah. I guess that is by Aureli. Aureli publication, I guess. Uh, sure. Hold on. I'll need to check. I don't remember the public. Okay, okay. Never mind. I'm not sure about it. Speaking about fuzzy set, I don't know much about it. I know something about fuzzy logic. It is I... somewhere AI based something uh, which has, um, which is like, I don't know okay, much yeah. about it. Let me, let me, let me uh, tell. So basically, fuzzy logic is uh, so uh, whenever we do classification or all of these things, we assume that we have different classes and something either completely belongs to a class or completely does not belong. We assume that the world is binary and we ignore all the shades in between. For example, uh, if you're talking about the real world in actuality is not totally binary as we assume it, such as if we talk about uh, the height of a person, then if we are do having a model, then the model will tell us if whether the person is short or tall or uh, maybe average height. But, act uh, but in the uh, re real case, this depends on the perspective and depends on different person to person. And this, there is no clear boundary on where to define. So in these cases where there's no co concrete boundary between two classes, you cannot say if that if a person is like five foot, uh, ten inch tall, then only he'll be classified as tall or whatever boundary. So you use the fuzzy logic and you use fuzzy sets for that. So fuzzy sets tell us the that uh, the probability of a thing belonging to a class is this for example you can say that the uh, this person is 0 0.8 like 80 percent tall and 20 percent average height in. something like that where you say that uh, there's no concrete boundary but we can say that this uh, the amount of belonging to a class is this much so we model the entire world and all of the things in a fuzzy logic in a fuzzy set where we don't have concrete boundaries, but we have particular different like fuzzy sets. So is that enough, Supriya? Uh, how do we use these fuzzy sets? So we have... Uh, 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 I have one example, Harsha. 
you know this is uh, i read somewhere it is used in washing machine so you know in washing machine these are these days these are there are automatic washing machine which detects how much time to run the machine depending upon how much dirty are the clothes so in dirty you cannot say zero or one so it has it is pretty much like zero is dirty dirtiest and then you have 0.2 0.3 0.4 0.7 5 and somewhere like one till one and depending upon those sets like those binary those uh, multi class sets uh, it pretty much detects how much the speed of the machine should be how much detergent to add uh, and that's that's how automatic washing machine use it uses fuzzy logic for that and fuzzy logic is an entirely different uh, subsection of ai which uh, de- deals with fuzzy logic fuzzy sets and fuzzy mathematics as well you have rules and predicates and rules tell us that if this thing is 80% of class 1 and 20% of class 2 then this is 30% of class 3 something like that uh, the entire thing is based on the fuzzy logic so if we train a neural network model on fuzzy logic for classification then your model will say that this is 80% a cat and 20% a dog something like that or this person is uh, 20% average height and 80% small height so that's the basic of fuzzy logic uh moreover as we told earlier in the first lecture that ai is a big thing and machine learning is a part of it and deep learning is a part of machine learning so if you see ai is a big thing it has a uh, machine learning it has fuzzy as a different set of a uh, solution like system which is being used for ai then it has d- d- different de- uh, other systems and uh, that's how i define that you see you give, you got an example how machine learning is uh, machine learning is just a subset of ai it's not the whole ai you cannot say that machine learning is ai and ai is machine learning all right mm-hmm. is it similar to confidence parameter in image recognition no no not ex- no the confidence parameter tells us how sure the model is about its prediction and the fuzzy thing says that like uh, assume for example in our uh, in our case the confidence was maybe 80% so the machine tells us that it is 80% sure that this is a cat the fuzzy the fuzziness in this is 100% cat and the confidence is 80% but you can yeah. the intuition is similar right so that was pretty much about today's lecture thank you for joining everyone i hope you enjoyed and know you came to know about lots of stuff in today's lecture and um, that was today's last lecture in this workshop uh, that was really a great time with you all i hope this was enjoyable time like the whole two week um thanks a lot harsh harsh has taken so many efforts creating those uh, memes and uh, presentations and explaining the concept very properly and it was amazing explanation thank you all the audience for joining uh, the only thing when i was selecting when we were selecting all of you uh, through the application which was submitted it was like uh, i hope these be passionate enough because that was the only criteria that i wanted that you should not leave in between and you should be completing your assignments and stuff like that the like you should have dedication to complete this course and i see that was totally fulfilled most of you were there for all the um, uh as lectures and submitted all the assignments on time and did the course with uh, great dedication so thank you thanks a lot for joining i hope you enjoyed and uh, that was really great having you and teaching taking up this course and just a small note from myself that uh, obviously machine learning is a very great field and uh, it's very expansive so there are a lot of things which you'll go through step by step but i think you'll you have gone through the basics and you have the intuition of what to do and how to search for things like uh, from all the assignments we gave you it was a little uh, bit of research on your part that you had to find out things and stuff so even now when you go on to do your projects there'll be many different things which you'll have to add up which are not covered here such as we do feature extraction from pca lda we have the nave based algorithm decision tree we have something about gans there are so many technologies out there and you'll have to find out for yourself about each one of them and once you have the basic intuition what we tried to give you 
of how these algorithms work and what is it in there that makes them so wonderful once you have that now uh, you're good to go you're good to make your own projects you're good to learn more from all these books and courses and that was the aim of this uh, workshop series that was the aim of this course uh and for the conclusion ceremony which will be probably on sunday so i want i wish to take a great photo of everyone so make sure you pretty much are well dressed because then you won't be turning on your cameras so make sure you are in position that day to turn on your cameras please so uh, that that's pretty much about this lecture thank you do you want wishes to say anything and mute yourself if, if you want to share anything about this workshop and the time you spent over here with assignments and lectures or we can have this in the uh, conclusion call as well so let's uh, end session yeah. okay uh bye everyone